Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Aisha Butterfly and today I'm going to be talking about pretty privilege and the idea that are you pretty or do you just look white or do you just have European features? Do you just have, are you just a European standard of beauty? And this is a very, very interesting question and I've been very intrigued with the idea of beautiful because like growing up, I always like found certain people attractive and certain people unattractive and in society, this is very common like, we automatically deem certain people as very pretty or handsome and certain people just not as attractive and it's like why like what features or what things in particular about that person do we not like is it their eyes is it their nose is it their lips is it their skin tone and it just then begged the question and what i have noticed is those people that are deemed as more attractive usually have european features usually have like pointy noses or smaller noses usually have like a moderate sized lips usually have certain eyes certain skin tones and then i started to think god damn i started to think oh it then just clicked to me the people that looked more white more european even if they're from other places like from for instance more black women who have more eurocentric features not to say that people from westernized countries are the only people who are going to have those features but what i'm saying is we find those features more with these people so people who look more like them even if they're from other countries automatically get seen as more attractive like i always wonder like am i attractive and then i think maybe because i do have some features which does fit this beauty standard so as a result of that some people might find me more attractive because i do have features that fit into that but i always think to myself if my nose was a little bit wider or a little bit bigger I might have a different experience of the world because now I might be seen as less attractive or if my lips were just not up to the standard I might be seen as less attractive so it just made me want to make this video and talk about pretty privilege and just get into it because I think it's so interesting to think about and our idea of beauty and how it's also constantly shifting like what we thought was beautiful 50 years ago has completely changed to what we think is beautiful today in the 21st century so beauty is always changing so if you don't fit it right now wait 10 years you might fit it then so if you don't know what pretty privilege is it is when your looks is attributed or related to your characteristics and people think that the better you look the more successful you are the more honest you are the healthier you are the kinder you are and this is really interlinked with the halo effect and this is a scientific study that was done that people who are more attractive or seen as more attractive will just have better opportunities in life they will have higher grades they will get better jobs they will get better partners they would be seen as more trustworthy more honest therefore have more friendships and more opportunities and if you really think about it people like i don't know influencers or celebrities for the most part some of them don't have any true talent apart from being attractive and this is my point exactly that they are able to make a living off just being attractive and whereas other people have to work really hard, go to school, put in that work just to make a living. Whereas you can just wake up, get that genetic lottery and be able to make money off just looking good like models. Don't get me wrong, models work extremely hard, but I'm saying like they are living off being attractive. Like that is the dream. I would love to be able to just live off being attractive you know that is my dream that is my goal i know it's quite sad but if you just think about it some people get to wake up be attractive and just have a better life not because they're better people not because they're kind of people or more deserving just literally based off the standards of our society and society basically saying yeah you're pretty so you're going to get everything that you want and you can see this a lot as well in schools so the better looking kids are more likely to get higher grades for instance be more favored by the teacher even if they're not necessarily smarter than someone who is less attractive they the less attractive person might end up getting a b whilst the more attractive person might end up getting an a even though they produced a similar standard of work and you also see this again with you know the mates and the partners that you get to have if you're more attractive you have a better chance of getting a partner that is maybe more wealthy more attractive and that is just a, like the idea of the halo effect 
and when the halo effect plays the biggest role when it comes to marketing when it comes to customer service because if you've ever been to a shop or a shopping center someone is trying to sell you something you will find most of the time they're attractive because it's the idea that people who we find more attractive we automatically trust them we automatically want to listen to them we want to be closer to them and it's just so weird like when you start researching the stuff you're like oh my goodness like if you've ever been in foot locker you have never a day in your life seen an on an a unattractive person at foot locker because they know it is a marketing strategy to make sure everyone in there is good looking so that they can sell you more shoes and sell you more stuff so that's just part of it even if you go in like selfridges where it's all more like fancy i'm not saying you like want to rip off everybody's closing there but i'm saying you're more likely to find them more attractive and because you find them more attractive the halo effect comes in play you tend to trust them more you tend to think of them as more intelligent and therefore you're going to be purchasing some stuff like this is why like in the marketing world the social media world this is why influencers are so popular this is why they are one of the biggest marketing tools i myself i'm a influencer but the idea is that people are gonna see those influencers who look good to people wearing certain things and that effect of oh i trust them they must be honest they're more this they're more that you're gonna automatically have that in your head about them and as a result you're more likely to listen to them you're more likely to go and purchase the stuff that they're recommending for you to purchase because it's like they look good in it so you might look good in it and you might want to sort of be more like them so now i'm going to talk more about the european beauty standard and i'm going to talk about how this has played a very big part in whether you are attractive or not attra not attractive so one thing i'm going to say is people from different races can have all sorts of fe features you can get a Caucasian person with a bigger nose and bigger lips, you can get a black person with thinner lips and a thinner nose. But when I say European or Afrocentric, what I am saying is that these two types, they're more common among these races. So if I say a European, it's because it's more current. Those features like a pointy nose, smaller nose is probably more current, whereas bigger noses, wider noses will be more common with Afrocentric people. Doesn't mean that they can't be all different shapes of noses but it's just more common amongst that group so i'm gonna get straight into like where this idea that european beauty standards are more attractive and this actually goes back to colonization and slavery and this is when africans were brought from africa to europe united states and the darker skinned people had to work on the fields and do the hard manual labor whereas the lighter skinned people got to go inside and be under the shade have better working conditions and as time went by in the black community in general there was this idea that the lighter you are the better you are as a result of just that one scenario it has gone on and on and on and on and we have been brainwashed into thinking the lighter you are the more attractive that you are as a whole which i just don't think is true. you can get attractive people of dark shades you can get unattractive people of lighter shades so I just feel like we've all been brainwashed when we were younger because I vividly remember being a little girl playing with my blonde hair, blue eyes, thigh gap Barbie doll with no waist and thinking, oh damn, I wish I was white. Oh, I wish I had blonde hair and blue eyes. I just thought that growing up because I never saw any black cartoons. I never saw any representation of me on TV or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I grew up, I think every, black girl almost grew up with this oh i wish i was white i wish i was lighter skin i wish my hair had looser curls i wish i had smaller lips and a smaller nose and it's just so brainwashed in us because from early we're being taught this is good and this is bad like there was that little scientific research video of the little kids basically like they had a black barbie doll and a white doll and they say which is the good doll which is the bad doll and all the kids said the black doll was the bad one the white one was the good one is the black doll yes, and which one is the white doll that one. which doll is the pretty doll which doll is the nice doll which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? 
And which doll is the bad doll? And, what, and why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he, because he's black. Which doll looks most like you? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. Okay. That doll. And that is just so mind blowing to me that at such an early age, kids can already see the colorism that takes place. And some of these kids were black kids saying the black kid is the bad kid. And it's like, it's so wide in us through like cartoons, through TV programs, they always keep sending out this message. And if you watch my Love Island video, you would see that I talked about how black women are constantly getting this message that we're not desirable, we're not desired and we're angry, we're aggressive. And if we speak up, oh yeah, we've got an attitude. <laughs> like we can't win, we can't win. If we don't have um, a body that is stereotypical of a black woman, like big boobs, big bum, then we're not attractive. And if we do have it, we don't, we're then sexualized. It's just like, you can never win. You can never win. If we have straight hair, you're trying to be white. If you have curly hair, oh, that hair is not attractive and you look unkept and... <laughs> and to like move on, I just wanted to talk about how there has been a sort of hybrid of these two standards. So you will see a lot today. Now the standard is Afrocentric features like the body, the boobs, the waist, the bum. Most women want that sort of body shape, like being thick or slim thick. People want that body shape, but however, they don't want the Afrocentric features on the face. They don't want the wide nose. They don't want any of that. They want the smaller nose, moderate sized lips, maybe like the eyes you know being lifted or whatever but a good example of this are the kardashians they have this perfect hybrid merge between the two beauty standards everybody wants they have the body of a black woman and the face of a caucasian woman with some features of black women like lips the skin etc etc and this is quite like problematic um because it's like both races somehow are being shamed so if you're on the eurocentric side you may have the face that is the standard but however you may not have the lips so you may feel pressure to get lip injections or you may not have the body so you may feel the pressure to go and get a boob job or to go and get a bbl or to go to the gym and build your body like this is what i mean no body on the side is winning but i just personally feel like if you're more closer to the Eurocentric standard of beauty, you are more likely to have just an easy life in general. But then on the other hand, you could be a black woman with the perfect body. There's no such thing as a perfect body. I feel like everybody's body that they have is perfect, but according to society, there is a perfect body, if we're being completely honest. And if you're a black woman with the perfect body, your face might not make the standard like if your nose is too big you might be pressured to get a nose job if your lips are too big like there's even your hair like for as long as i have remembered most black women have been thought to relax their hair to chemically damage their hair and if you don't know relaxers do cause cancers it causes a lot of health risks like pregnant women can't relax their hair and why is that because it is so dangerous to the body it's harmful to the body it's harmful to the baby so if it's harmful to the baby why wouldn't it be harmful to you that we are thought to chemically change our hair to bleach our skin to get a nose job to just fit into the standard and it's so ridiculous and also i feel like a lot of influencers like black influencers are also starting to look very the same even influences of all races are starting to come down and look very the same in terms of their noses, their bodies, their hair, starting to look very the same to me. Um, and I'll show some examples of some influences that I feel like have Afrocentric bodies and Eurocentric faces. And this is a great example to show this is the standard today. If you go on your explore page and you look at the women they're showing, they will have Eurocentric features on the face like the nose and 
whatever and then their bodies would also be the waist in the boobs the bum so yeah i feel like black women are attached to a lower status i feel like when men get successful they always drop black women most of the time and they get a lighter skin women because apparently that is attached to a higher status and it just makes me think does this go back to the colonization where the black women were on the field or the black people was on the field and the lighter skin women was in the house like does it lead that far back or am i just reaching but yeah this is like all the points that i had because i'm looking at my laptop i did have a list and i just thought i would start this conversation with you guys so i can get your opinion like am i tripping or is this true like is it true that the more caucasian you look the more attractive you are you know you are and the more afrocentric you look in the face at least the less attractive you are so you guys answer that question for me in the comment section tell me like am i tripping or do you see like where i'm coming from or do you agree with some parts and disagree with other parts and do you have your opinion of your own that you want to share with me because it would be very very interesting to hear you guys's point of view as well because i have been rambling for the longest but yeah if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a like if you have anything you want to add to it leave it in the comment section don't forget to follow my social medias to catch up with me and make sure that you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and i would recommend that you go and watch my black women in love island video because that is very similar to this one and if you enjoyed this one you might enjoy that one so i'm going to link that in the description so thank you guys for making it this far and watching the whole video and i'll see you next time lots of love to you bye bye